Hello, I'm Yvonne. Thank you for joining me. So this yoga class is designed with beginners in mind. So you will need a yoga mat if you have one. If not, um, maybe if it's a nice day, try doing yoga out on the grass. That can feel wonderful. I hope you enjoy the class. If at any stage during the poses that you feel like oh it's a little bit too much for your body back up or come out of the pose altogether your body is perhaps not ready for that pose today so I hope you enjoy so we're going to begin by lying down on the back so if you want to make your way down the safe way to come down onto the back is bending the knees if you're sitting first bend the knees and then just start to lower down onto one elbow and then the other and then just ease your way down onto the back onto the floor so we'll keep both knees bent for the moment and then we're just going to draw the right knee in towards the chest so just maybe taking a hold of the leg around the by the shins if you can manage and then maybe some of you might like to slide that left leg away so just drawing that right knee in if you've slid the left leg away just flex that left foot so the toes of the left foot going up towards the ceiling we just take a few breaths here. Now, if you have your left leg outstretched, you bend that left leg, place the left foot on the floor. And now here we're going to take our hands behind that right leg. You're going to lengthen the right foot up towards the ceiling. You don't need to straighten that right leg. We're just going to start to circle the right foot around so just mobilizing the ankle so we take it one direction for a few goes and then change direction go the other way it's just nice circles for the ankle and then here we're just going to lower the toes down towards you so just getting into the back of that right leg so it doesn't need to be poker straight you can have a nice bend in the leg this is getting into the back of the calf, the back of the hamstring, and then pointing the toes away. Sometimes when people do this, either move that we get cramps in the feet. So if that happens, you can just come out of the pose. And then here, that right knee, just start to allow it to come down, maybe out towards your right, to the outside of your right shoulder. So you're taking a hold of the leg, maybe behind the thigh, or taking a hold of it at the the shin or the ankle if you can hold on to the foot go for it so this is what we would call happy baby pose or half happy baby pose and then we'll release that right leg so here now let's change over to the left side so hugging that left knee in towards the chest slide the right leg away from you if you want to if that feels okay on the back stay here flex the right foot and a few breaths here, just drawing the left knee in towards the chest. And then we'll take the right foot, place it on the floor so the right knee is bent. Just lengthen the right foot up towards the sky. You can take a hold of the left leg, just supporting the left leg at the back of the thigh and begin to circle the foot around. And then let's change direction. So just working into the ankle joint here. Good. And then we'll bring the toes down towards your left shin. So you're pressing out through the left heel. And then we point the toes away. Good. And then we just start to bend that left knee a little bit more strongly. So you're taking it down towards the chest, but a little bit out to the left side, seeing where you can take a hold of the leg. So maybe up at the toe or the foot or the shin, the ankle, whatever works for you. And breathing here. And then we'll release that left leg down. Now we're going to turn to the side. You're going to press your 
top hand into the floor to bring yourself up safe, safely to a seated position. And here, the way you sit is, is your choice. So you can sit back on your heels like I am doing. Sometimes people like to sit up on a block so it's not so uh, squashy for the feet. So a little bit of height, a block, or even a folded up blanket. You could prop yourself up on that blanket and fold it up. Um, so we can sit back on the heels. That's one option. Or perhaps taking a cross-legged position. So one shin crossed in front, in front of the other. Or you could have one ankle crossed in front of the other or one heel in front of the other. So it's what I, the way I like to go. And the reason we use the block is to try and help us sit up a little bit taller so that natural curve in the back the lower spine is there so sometimes when we sit we try and sit and we might find that it's curving too much back it's difficult to sit up straight so when we elevate the hips up by using a prop it just helps up us sit up a little bit taller spine is nice and long and in its natural shape so we'll start with the head and the neck, just lower the chin down towards the chest and begin to just roll the head around. Just keeping the shoulders nice and relaxed, keeping the hands nice and relaxed, resting on the legs. And we go one more round. So as soon as your chin reaches the chest the next time, then just take it the opposite way. I'm just taking this nice and slowly, just being aware of any tight little spots in the neck, across the shoulders. Just seeing, can you feel a little bit more connected to your body? And then when the chin reaches the chest again, just lifting the head back up. So we'll take the shoulders up towards the ears and then rolling them back down the back. So we want to take them backwards and then lowering them down, up and back and down. As you take your shoulders back, see, can you feel your shoulder blades moving towards each other and trying to draw them down the back? And then see, can you feel your chest opening somewhat? So just one more and then relaxing the shoulders. Take your right hand out to the side. We're going to work with the breath here, a little side flow. So on an inhale, we lift the left arm up. And then on the exhale, you're going to lean to your right. As you breathe in, lifting up, you can lift the right arm here. And then exhale, leaning over to your left. So we'll flow with the breath here. Rise up on the inhale and leaning to the side on the exhale. And we'll go again. Over to the left side. Try and keep your sit bones. These are the bones in your bum. Try to keep them glued down to the block or the floor, whatever you're sitting on. And exhaling, left side, coming back up. And this time you can just lower both arms down. We'll take our right hand behind us. Take your left hand onto your right leg. So on an inhale, sit up tall. And on the exhale, just a gentle twist to your right. So you're turning your torso to the right. So a few breaths here. Maybe even turning your head, if there's no wish even the neck, turning your head to look over the right shoulder. On your next inhale, take your gaze forward, exhale and do the twist. And we're going to go the other way. So we'll take the left hand behind, the right hand to the left leg. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, twisting to your left. And here again, you can take your gaze over your left shoulder. And 
and on your next inhale, taking your gaze forward and exhale and do the twist. So we'll come on to all fours now. So you can take, if you had a prop there underneath you, you can remove that. And we're going to come into what we call our cat-cow movement. This is a lovely little mobilization exercise for the spine, along the spine and the front of the body. So we take the hands beneath the shoulders, spread the fingers here. The knees are beneath the hips. And on an inhale, Start to lower the tummy down towards the floor. You bring the chest forward and you just look forward. And on the exhale, you start to draw the tailbone down towards the mat. You round the spine and your chin tucks in. Inhale, we'll go again. So this is what we call the cow pose, where we're arching the back. And exhale, coming into cat pose. This is where we're doming the back. Inhale again, lifting the tailbone. Chest moves forward. Exhale, lowering the tailbone. Press the floor away with the hands. And let's go again one more round. Inhale, coming forwards. Exhale, rounding the spine, drawing the abdominal muscles in at the top of the movement and inhale, we'll come back to neutral. Take your big toes towards each other and then you're going to just sit the sit bones, the bones in your bum, bringing them back towards the heels and then we're going to lower down. So the knees here can be together or apart whatever feels comfortable. So we're gonna start lowering down towards the mat. So if this is feeling like the mat is a little bit too far away from you, you can maybe prop up one fist on top of the other and rest your forehead on top of the fists or perhaps one hand on top of the other or maybe the forehead reaches the floor comfortably. So this is child's pose here. So for the next couple of breaths, so you can breathe deeply and breathe into the back ribs. This is a pose that you can come to at any stage during your yoga practice when you feel like you'd like to just take a little break. Take your hands either side of the head and just press into the hands and bringing yourself up. We're going to move all the way down onto the floor. So resting down on the tummy, coming into what we call cobra. So we'll start with the feet. You're going to press the tops of the feet into the floor. And here we want to lift the kneecaps if they are, aren't already lifted. So we don't want the knees touching the floor. So this means the legs are engaged. We take the hands beneath the shoulders. Elbows are drawn into the side of the body. On your next inhale, begin to peel the chest somewhat away from the floor. Exhale, lower down. Inhale again. So you see, can you draw your shoulders back? Open the chest, exhale, lower down. And again, inhale, we rise up. Exhaling, releasing. Inhale, lifting. And releasing on the exhale. We'll go one more. Inhaling up. Exhale, lowering down. Curl your toes under, press into the hands, and we'll come to our first downward dog. So we'll place the hands slightly ahead of the shoulders, spread the fingers here. We want to root down through the base of the index fingers and the thumbs. And then curl the toes under, and you're going to press into the hands, lift the knees up. So the hips are coming up here as well. Keep the knees bent. 
Now think of your lower ribs. At any stage you need to come down, do. Think of the lower ribs, and we want to move those lower ribs towards the thighs, the tops of the thighs. As we do that action, we find length in the spine. Now some of you here might like to get into the back of the leg, so lowering one heel down and then the other. If this is your first time doing downward dog, you might find it quite tough on the shoulders and the hands. So keep coming down onto the knees, take a little break and then come back up again. So we'll just do another moment or two here, just pedaling the feet. And then we we'll begin to walk the feet up towards the hands. Keep the feet at hip width distance apart. Keep a nice soft bend in the knees here and a little forward fold. So in this forward fold, can you draw your belly button in towards your spine just to keep the abdominals activated? And then we're going to take the hands onto the hips and on your next inhale, press the feet into the floor. Bring yourself up safely to a standing position. And we come to Tadasana. So here Tadasana is mountain pose. So we can start with the feet together or you can take them a little bit apart, bit of space between the feet if you feel that it's challenging for your balance to have them together. If you are drawing them together, big toes touching. And then we'll work our way up the leg. So lift the kneecaps. So engage the quad muscles here. So these muscles are strong, they're working. Engage the core, so drawing in the lower abdominals. Draw the shoulders up towards the ears and back down the back. And then some energy going into the arms. And turn the palms, the hands out. And we take a few breaths here in mountain pose. It's just a strong, nice, strong posture here, standing up nice and tall, lifting up through the crown of the head. On your next inhale, float the arms up overhead. And exhale, release the arms back down again. So we go two more. Inhale, arms lifting, reach through the fingertips, exhale. Lower down, keep the strong posture, legs still engaged, inhale, arms up. This time, take a hold of the left wrist with the right hand, and on your next exhale, leaning to your right. So keep both feet grounding down to the floor here. A couple of breaths. On your next inhale, come back to the center, we'll change over. Exhale, leaning over to your left. So feet grounding down again, legs strong. And on your next inhale, lifting back to the center. Exhale, release the arms down. So we'll take the feet out wide on your mat. You're going to turn your right foot towards the right, towards the short end of the mat. The left foot is just turned in slightly. On an inhale, we'll take our arms up just shoulder height here. And on the exhale, we're going to bend the right knee. So here we're coming into warrior two. So you're stacking that right knee above the right ankle. We don't want this kind of look here. If that's happening, you scoop your back foot back a little bit more so that we have that correct alignment of the right knee above the right ankle. Here in the back leg, see, can you draw up on the kneecap of the left leg? And we take a few breaths here in warrior two. On your next inhale, straighten the right leg. Exhale, release the arms. And we'll change over to the other side. So we turn to the left. The left, point, the left foot is pointing towards the short end of the mat. The right foot turned in slightly. The heel of the left foot should be in line with the instep of the right foot. On an inhale, we'll take the arms up to shoulder height. And on the exhale, bending that left leg. So sinking into your warrior two, check the knee is above the ankle. 
And a few breaths here. See if you can keep your shoulders above your hips so we're not leaning forwards into the pose. On your next inhale, straighten that left leg. Exhale, release the arms. So we'll turn to the right again. This time both legs will stay relatively straight. So make the quads strong again. Lift up on the kneecaps. You turn your torso as best you can to the side. The right foot is pointing forwards, the left foot turned in slightly. On an inhale, we'll take the arms to shoulder height. On the exhale, just allow the hips to shift to the left, and then you reach as far forward with your right hand as you can. Then you start to lower it down. So you can rest on the shin, the ankle, wherever the hand lands. And we take that top arm, the left arm, up towards the ceiling or the sky. And those of you who feel okay in the neck, you can turn to look at that top hand. If there's any issues with the neck, just keep your gaze looking forwards. Just be careful here not to lock out that front knee. Maybe a little micro bend in the knee is good or remembering to draw up on the kneecap. Take your gaze back to neutral if your head was lifted. Inhale, we'll come back up to standing. Exhale lower the arms and we'll go the other way so left foot forward right foot turned in slightly draw up on the knees the kneecaps inhale take the arms up exhale shift the hips to the right and then reach as far forward as you can with the left arm then taking them down taking the left hand down to the shin or the ankle lift that top arm up towards the sky we just want to be careful in this pose that we don't try and come down so low that the top shoulder and chest collapses. We want to try and keep that chest lifted up to up upwards towards the sky or the ceiling. Take your gaze back to neutral if you were looking up. On your next inhale, press strongly into both feet. Core is strong, coming up. Exhale, release the arms. So we'll bring the feet back in towards each other. And we'll come into a little balance pose, tree pose it's called. So we'll take all the weight onto the left foot and you're going to lift up the right foot. So take the sole of the right foot onto the inside of the left leg. So as high up as you can manage, just don't go on the knee joint. So it's either below or above the knee joint. So you can reach down for your foot if it works for you. And just placing that foot on the inside of the left leg. So here now, hold on to the wall if, you're, if you need to for the balance. Some of you might like to let, take the hands to the heart here. So we'll just stay here with the hands at the heart. Sometimes we lift the hands up overhead, but we'll just stay here for today. Pressing the hands into each other at the heart and that right foot, just pressing it into the inside of the left leg. Tree pose. Good. And then we'll release the hands, release that right foot down and we'll change over. So it's the right foot resting on the floor, just getting the balance. And then we lift the left foot. So taking it to the inside of that right leg, wherever you can manage, just not on the knee joint. Good, and finding that connection there. And if you're able, taking the hands to the heart. And it's always helpful in these balance poses to fix your gaze on a still point. Good, and then we'll release the hands, release the foot. Coming back into Tadasana, so mountain pose, the strong posture pose. So when we think about the feet here, we wanna spread the toes as best we can and placing them back down on the mat. And just the base of the big toe, the base of the little toe and the center of the heel, gluing down to the floor. 
So grounding, grounding down to the floor. Lift the kneecaps, engage the core, shoulders drawn back, energy going into the arms. The chin is lifted slightly and drawn in. And then on an inhale, we'll lift the arms up overhead. You can take your gaze up to the hands if it feels okay. On the exhale, we'll come into our forward fold. So you're gonna take the arms out to the side, hinging at the hips here, lead with the chest. You can bend your knees if you need to, and just allowing the head and the torso to lower down. On an inhale, we'll take the hands to the shins. You're gonna bring the chest forward here. So just use that connection between the hands and the legs to help you lift the chest forward. Exhale, fold over the legs again. Inhale, rise up. Press the floor away with the feet. Circle the arms up overhead. And then exhale, take the hands back to the heart. We'll do that again. Inhaling, arms circling up. Exhale, forward fold. So arms come out wide. You lower down. Relax the head at the end. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthening the spine. So flattening the back here. Exhale, coming into your forward fold again. And inhale, rise up. Arms coming up. Palms touch at the top. Exhale, back to the heart. And one more round. Inhale, reaching up overhead. Exhaling, lowering down. Inhale, lengthening the spine, chest moves forward. Exhale, folding again. This time, we walk the hands forward. Hands, we'll bring ourselves onto hands and knees here. To keep the hips high now, we're going to walk the hands forwards into what we call puppy dog pose. So big steps forward with the hands, and then you're just going to allow the chest to melt down towards the floor. So the hips stay above the knees. If the head reaches the floor, go for it. You can rest it there. And then we'll start to walk the hands back. And we'll come to another little twist for the body. So we'll stretch out the left foot, the left leg. You're going to bend the right leg. Now, if you like, you can cross that right leg over the left leg. And we're going to take the right hand behind us here. So on an inhale, you're going to sit up tall. So see, can you lengthen up into the spine? And on the exhale, you're going to twist your torso to the right. So here you can either hug that right knee in towards you or some of you might like to take your elbow to the outside of that right knee. And then perhaps taking your gaze out along your right shoulder. Keep that left leg active, left foot is flexed. And with each inhale, you wanna imagine sitting up tall, each exhale, you're coming into the twist. Now to come out of the pose on your next inhale, take your gaze forwards, exhaling, undo your twist. And we'll change over. So I'm just gonna go this way. So we have the right leg outstretched, right toes coming upwards, bend the left leg, we cross it over. If you're going there, take the left hand behind this time. Inhale, sit up tall, nice long spine. Exhale, twisting to your left. So drawing that left knee in towards you, perhaps, or taking your right elbow to the outside of that left knee. Maybe taking your gaze out along the left shoulder. And just working with the breath here again. Sit up tall on the inhale. Twisting on the exhale. Mm -hmm. 
on your next inhale look forward exhale undo the twist we're going to lower ourselves down onto the floor so bend the knees one elbow down and then the other and then ease your way back down onto the mat keep both knees bent here we're coming into our figure of four pose so you're going to lift your right leg place the right ankle just above the left knee now we'll flex the right foot here if this is enough of a stretch for you here stay here some of you might like to lift that left foot off the floor and begin to draw that left thigh in towards you you can support that left thigh by taking a hold of it behind the thigh interlacing the hands and here we'll just stay with this pose again for a couple of breaths see can you feel the sensations in the body where you're feeling the pose perhaps around the right hip the right glute see can you soften on the exhale on your next exhale lower the left foot down we lower the right foot down and then we'll change so we'll take the left ankle just above the right knee flex that left foot stay here if you're feeling enough of a stretch here otherwise some of you might like to lift that right thigh up supporting it with the hands behind and some breaths here on your next exhale release that right foot down release the left foot down and then we'll just draw both knees in towards the chest hugging them in if you can big deep breath here and then just gently rocking the body from side to side And lowering the feet down. We'll come into Shavasana now for a few moments. So just give yourself this time just to rest and recover. So we'll take the legs out stretched. Now if this is too much on the lower back and you keep your knees bent. So just see what works for you. If you are need to bend your knees, take your feet to the outside edge of your mat and then just allow the knees to fall in towards each other so they're supported. If you have your legs outstretched, just allow the heels to be as wide as the hips, allow the feet to fall out to the sides. And then everybody just allowing the arms to come out to the sides, a bit of space between the arms and the side of the body palms of the hands turned up towards the sky then just making sure you have a comfortable position for your head you can close down the eyes and just take a moment just to feel the connection between your body and the floor Here we want to allow the ground to just take the weight of our body. So over the next few breaths, see, can you let go, release any holding, any tension in the muscles. See, can you soften. each exhale allowing a sense of stillness to come to the body
gently bringing your awareness back to the room you're in, to the mat, and to your body. You can start to bring some small movements to the fingers, to the toes. And then in your own time, just bending both knees. And you're going to roll or turn onto your right side. So turning the body to the right, we're going to rest here for a moment. So you can support your head with your right arm. The legs can be curled up. Keeping the eyes closed for a moment. And then you take your left hand to the floor. You're going to press into that left hand and bring yourself up to a seated position. You can open your eyes here. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the practice and gained some benefits from it. Namaste.